So what are we waiting for in regards to judgment, in regards to World War III, in regards to the destruction? What are we waiting for? And God told me to tell you that we are waiting on you. God is waiting on you. I know you hearing of wars and rumors of wars. I know by now, at least I hope by now, you didn't see that that sun that's in the sky ain't the same sun that you've known since you've been a child. That ain't the same type of E. It ain't, ain't on the same schedule. Something is different about that sun than when you was growing up as a child. I know everyone by now feels the sealed judgments, uh, the sealed judgments of Revelation 6, where Revelation 6 and 1 is about the seal of conquer and there's a conquering spirit on the world. You don't have no freedoms anymore to do anything. You don't got no freedom of speech. You ain't got freedom to post. They put people in jail for posting certain things online. You don't got freedom of movement anymore, freedom of assembly. You don't got no kind of freedom. Everything has been conquered. That was the seal of conquer. That's the spirit that's on the world right now. Seal judgment two is peace being taken from the earth. This is all in Revelation 6. It goes down the list. Seal judgment two, and I'm just telling you how they're on the world world right now because I know you feel it and you're wondering what is going on, right? Or what are we waiting for? Because it feels like some like we're like we have a culmination that we're headed towards something. What are we waiting for? And God has told me to tell you that he's waiting on you. You feel it? Seal judgment too. It's peace being taken from the earth and everyone's at ease and anywhere you go, you see on the news, roll raid incidents is at an all time high. You go to work, everybody on edge. You can't say nothing to nobody at work anymore. You say a joke. Oh, hey, you going for Trump or come off. Hey, man, what in the world? You people will flip out on you. It ain't like how it used to be. Everyone's on the edge because peace has been taken from the earth. Uh, uh, daughters against uh, uh, fathers and mothers against son. My daughter wrote something and flashed on me out of nowhere. I said, what in the world? So soon she turned 18, three weeks after. I said, what is going on? Peace has been taken from the earth and then uh, from the earth and then seal judgment inflation. And we all feel the inflation, right? We've been feeling that for a long time. And now we're coming up on the fourth seal or already living in the fourth seal. Lord, help me preach this thing. And, uh, and it just feels like nothing has been the same since the pandemic and people are starting to wake up and everyone sees that the world is different than what it used to be, but everyone is also wondering, what are we waiting for? And I'm here to tell you that I know it sounds crazy, but we are waiting on you. Second Peter, Three and eight says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some might understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Most high, we praise your high holy name to give us time to repent. Lord knows I needed the mercy. I was caught up in all kinds of worlds. If God would have went in and got rid of this in 20 20, I'd have been on my way with Satan to, into the pit. You understand me? In, into the abyss. Oh my God, but God had mercy. <laughs> oh Lord, uh, most high had mercy. Christ had mercy. Uh, look, the timeline was just, we jump in timelines. Oh, they don't want what I got tonight. But uh, God has delayed judgment on the whole world for you and for me. We are waiting on you. We are waiting on you. What are we waiting for? I've been hearing the wars and rumors of wars. I'm seeing the inflation and the pieces and the seals being for what are we waiting for? Man, I got to be honest. And I'll say it loud because many people have said this to me throughout the years. Leo, you're a date setter. Stop being a date setter. And even though the Bible says no one knows the day or the hour, I just can't help myself 90% of the time to decipher and decode the words of the most high. And I try not to make exact dates. Matter of fact, I almost never make exact dates because I know that no one knows the date or hour, but I do know the Bible says that we know the season as we all right now can feel this season and see this season that we're living in right now. But I have learned over the years of preaching 
that God does not do things on our timeline. God doesn't even do things on any predicted timeline or any timeline that our thoughts or our minds can predict. You know how the Bible says that his ways are above our ways and thoughts above our thoughts. So even the timeline that we have, oh, I want to get into that deep on, on time because, you know, the Bible also says how he seeks to change time because the devil has changed times, uh, has changed the time. But even if you look at your own clock and it says 60 seconds is a minute and all these, I could get into that deep, but let's not go there. But the point is, that God doesn't do anything on any predicted time that we as humans could come up with because God is outside of time. The book of Daniel calls God the ancient of days, meaning that he was before days existed. He was before time even. Oh, you got to hear what I'm saying. Before time even was ever thought of or brought into existence. God is outside of that. So check this out. I was talking to God the other night and he said to me, Leo, I put judgment on hold for you so that no one would perish. Remember the scripture says in Matthew uh, 18 and 12, if a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, would he not leave the 99 on the hill to go look for the one that wandered off? Do you not hear what I'm saying? <laughs> a man got a hundred sheep, the whole world on their way. But one, one, look, 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 God is on, on a destiny, on a path. He walking up the path to go ahead and take care of it. But one wanders off. Let me stop everything that's going on over here just to come get you. Lord, we thank you. Most high, we thank you. We are living, literally living under the third seal. The fourth seal is up next, or we might already be living in the fourth seal in a powder keg. You know what I'm saying? It's about to explode anytime like a powder keg. The whole world feels like a fuse about to get lit. And we are all just sitting around watching it. And it feels like like any day now, everything is going to explode. And I know many are wondering, what are we waiting for? But God told me to tell you that we are waiting on you. God, I thank you. We are waiting. Lord, I thank you. In the middle of God about to destroy it all, he stopped. <laughs> In the middle, he headed somewhere. But it's timeline ain't our timeline. People keep I keep hearing everybody talking about how they feel like they're going through a time jumping. Uh, did you feel the time shift last night? I might have put some some of the video. People say they feel a time. What's going on? He stopped it just for you. Lord, I thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Most High, so that no one shall perish. Uh uh uh. So that no one shall perish. Remember Nineveh. God told them if they would repent that he wouldn't destroy them. During the days of Noah, particularly in the book of Jasher, and I've read the scriptures many times in the book of Jasher, but God told Noah to go preach for a hundred years to the people and told them if they repent that he would relent of the destruction and the judgment that he was going to bring on them. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. In the book of Revelations, I believe it is 14, when an angel flies over, it talks about how the angel tells you tells everybody to repent because you know what I mean? <laughs> judgment is on his way, but the people refuse to repent. Somebody hear what I'm saying? God is a just God. He does not desire for anyone to perish in 1 Timothy uh, 2 and four says, this is good and pleasing in the sight of God, our savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Kamala versus Trump. I don't think it's going to be Kamala. It might be somebody else. If it is Kamala, then it's rigged for Trump for sure. She, I mean, come on now, <laughs> right? Y'all can't see this. I was going to do a whole message talking about how it's, this is rigged, right? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last Trump for the Trump. So saying, you can't see this? <laughs> you get shot in the head, you know, or uh, appear a head wound. Come on, somebody. Y'all can't see this. They call him the man of lawlessness. And then uh, um, the judge uh, uh, passed, uh, the Supreme Court passed a, a law that said that a president cannot be uh, persecuted. And they call him the Bible. They call him the man of lawlessness. So I, now I'm lawless because I can't be prosecuted if I'm president. I can't be prosecuted, so you can't charge me with anything so I can be lawless because I'm not under any law. No one hears what I'm saying. I'm, I listen to this. I'm not make, I'm not creating this. This is what the scripture says. He just happened to line up with it. I could give you another one, but I ain't even going to get into that. But at the last Trump, Kamala versus Harris, this has to be it. At the last Trump, the Trump itself sound, this has to be it. 400 year prophecy being fulfilled right before our very eyes. This has to be, uh, to be it. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? We are waiting on you. We are waiting on you. God said that we are waiting on you. This is too good. This is too good. Uh, lastly, I want you of the chosen. I want you that can hear the sound of my voice to remember Lot. 
Because sometimes the thought of judgment and destruction in the end times and the last days can scare you or can worry you. And I do not want you to be uh, weary or afraid. The Most High God does not want you to be weary or afraid you know, or on the edge in these last days. We want you to, I want you to remember the story of Lot. Remember God was coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Before he went, he went to go speak with Abraham with two of his angels. And Abraham asked God uh, before he sent his angels off to destroy uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. He asked him in uh, Genesis 18 and 23. He said, uh, uh, Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, because God said he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham, brother Lot lived there. So Abraham asked, hey, are you going to sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you sweep? Will you really sweep it all away and not spare that place for the sake of the 50 righteous people? Genesis uh, 18 and 26 says the Lord said, if there are 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole uh, city for their sake. And then, you know, uh, Abraham goes on to ask, what if there's 40? What if there's 20 righteous people? What if there's 40? Around? God help me persist. Because, you know, this is what I'm talking about this. Because sometimes we go down these rabbit holes, right, of being worried and, and we start uh, imagining the destruction and we start to, uh, uh, you know, uh, they got something going on in St. Louis right now where, you know, where the earthquake going to come. Because even with, you know, the, the seal judgments being broken, you know, you want, uh, the fourth seal is, is like a world war and, a, uh, and, a, um, and a, um, oh, Lord, 25% of the earth going to be killed by the sword, famine and plague. And then you got the sixth seal, uh, I'll skip over the fifth, but then you got the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake. Right. And how is that going to culminate? And what is it going to look like? And you might feel like, you know, am I in the right town? I'm in the right city. Because I remember watching a guy online I used to follow on TikTok. He moved his family from Alaska to some city. I don't know where he's at now, but from Alaska, some city because of the map, you know, that Deagle map that shows which states are going to be destroyed. They say it's going to be destroyed by this great flood. Right. You know, it's going to take over California. It's going to take up all this stuff, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, then, you know, that's funny, too, because in Revelations 12, God help me. Is it Revelation 12 or 13? Uh, Revelations 12, I was just reading over, over that. And it talks about how Satan uh, spews out this water at us, but the earth saved the woman. Oh, God. <laughs> I got so much that I want to give y'all. But, you know, it's my first one back. So let me just hold on. Right. So so where was I at? Where was I at? Oh, Lord, help me. Uh, uh, oh, Lord, where was I at? Mm -hmm. Anyways, where, where was I? I don't know where I was. So, so you could get um, weary, and um, you could be uh, worried that uh, um, you're going to be destroyed with the destruction. And what I'm trying to show you is that if there's just one righteous person left, you that righteous person. If there's just one of God's chosen, one who has fallen His laws, commandments, and statutes, uh, one has accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Just one there, God is gonna spare the whole nation, the whole city, or He gonna spare you, or He gonna make sure when the water come or when the destruction come that the earth swallow it up. You know, place you in the wilderness, place you in a place where you're gonna be protected. That's what I want you to see. And Lot, one righteous man, and his entire family was saved in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God almost literally diverted judgment on a whole city just for them. Mm -mm -mm. Just for them. Judgment is coming. But God's timeline is outside of our time. It will happen in the time that he has ordained for it to occur. But it is impossible for us to predict or to know when it's going to happen because God is outside of time and he might have to switch things up for you because you got to think if the God is walking with all these sheep, right? And they walking up the hill and they're supposed to get there at five o'clock. Did you feel the timeline jump last night? Did you feel the timeline shift? You ain't even hear people say, <laughs> what's going on? Lord, help me. What are we waiting for? And the most high God told me to tell you that we are waiting on you. Receive this message in the name of Christ. In Jesus' name, receive this message. I will talk to you guys soon. Shalom, shalom. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You can support by subscribing at ministries.leodunson.com. There you will receive exclusive content and unreleased videos. Please go subscribe at ministries.leodunson.com and may the glory of God and his blessings be upon you.